You don't want to give away the value of your professional network. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, well, before we answer that question, let's talk about what, how do I define a professional network, at least for the purposes of this conversation, right? And this, this video it applies to a lot of different types of, of real estate professionals, but it, this, I'm making this video mostly for, for land surveyors and private land planners. So if you're a land surveyor, what is your professional network? A professional network is the people you know and respect that work in your profession or in related professions. Okay? So, and there's a couple key, key parts of that definition, right? It's people you know. So in other words, you're not, have to look, you're not having to look people up on Google or, or in the yellow pages. So it's people you know, people you've met, people you've talked to, people you've worked with. And then the other part of the definition is it's those, you respect those professionals. In other words, you know, you know they do good work. So if you're a land surveyor, um, who might that include? Well, it could include land attorneys, civil engineers, land title professionals, architects, lenders, brokers, geotechnical engineers, biologists, arborists, archaeologists, landscape architects, contractors, construction managers, all those people. We work with all those people all the time, right? And if you're a land surveyor, you probably know some of those, some of those folks in those other professions. Okay, so here's what I want you to remember. Everybody, no matter how grumpy you are, has some professional network, right? You know some, you, you don't typically work in complete isolation. There's some folks you know that you work with on a, on a fairly regular basis, right? And so part of what I want to teach surveyors in this conversation is uh, you don't want to just give away the value of that network. You know, the, the, the network of professionals that you could bring to any project team, um, that, those relationships are worth something, right? And you don't want to squander those, you know, and, and what do I mean by squander? Well, first of all, um, you don't want to send bad clients to those people. That's the first part. Um, and secondly, um, if, if you're helping a client build a project team and, and maybe even manage a project team, um, there's, there's some value in that. And you should be reasonably compensated for that. Okay, so you don't want to give away the value of the network. And I'm going to just tell you a story that happened to me uh, a few years ago. Um, and, that, that is, and it helped me learn this lesson. Okay. And uh, so it, it was a it was a mistake that I made. So we got a call from a from a gentleman. Uh, he was he wanted to he had bought some property and he wanted to build a, a winery in a in a vineyard out in Isleton, which is out in the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta. And so he called me and it, and the first thing he asked me for was a boundary survey and um, and, a, and a site plan. And so I was started working on the proposal for the boundary survey and the site plan. And then while I was working with him on that, he started asking me a bunch of other questions. He says, hey, do you know, can you recommend a civil engineer for me? Sure. So send him, send him a civil engineer. He said, hey, can you recommend a geotechnical engineer for me? Sure. Send him a geotechnical engineer. Hey, I need a, you got a title company you like to work with? Sure. To, you know, tell him who our title company is. He says, uh, you know, hey, um, I need a, you know, I need a, uh, uh, work with, with a, uh, a lender. Do you have a lender that, that you work with? You know, I need to get a construction loan. Do you have somebody you can recommend? Sure. Yeah. Talk, talk to this guy. He, you know, he, he finances projects. So I, I don't know, this process played out over maybe a week or maybe two weeks, just back and forth with this guy, you know, trying to help him find the right people that he needed to execute this project, to build this vineyard in this winery. So after a, a, a week or two, uh, he, I, I followed up with him. I said, hey, you know, I haven't heard from you on our proposal for the for the survey, yeah, the, the boundary survey, the topo, the site plan. You know, where are you at? And he said, well, he said, you know, I, I found somebody to do this for, for a couple thousand dollars cheaper than you did. And when I when I started working on the proposal with this gentleman, I, I just told him, I said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be the cheapest guy you're going to find. And, and um, you know, if you're just going to shop me around, then I, you know, please tell me because then you need to find somebody else. I'm not a good fit, and I, I don't want to invest time in putting together a proposal for you, and then have you have you go with low bid. And so he told me, "Oh no, I'm not going to do that." You know, I called you guys because you, you had a you know you had a good reputation. Well, and the guy lied to me, right? At the end of the day, uh, he found somebody that was was cheaper than I was, a couple thousand dollars, and hired them to do the survey work. Now that wasn't even the part that that wasn't even really the salt in the wound. Here was the salt in the wound. Here's what burned me: is by that time, by the time I got that answer. I had already given this guy my professional network, right? I like I had built his project team, right? So he went and hired the civil I gave him. He went and hired the geotechnical engineer I gave him. He went and worked with the title company that I referred to him. Right? And I know this because I talked to some of these people <laughs> after the fact. Um, and so that taught me something though, right? So here's an individual that was interested in extracting the maximum value from me that he could 
um, without having to pay me any money, and I fell for it, right? And this, this guy was an experienced developer. He'd done some projects before, so he knew, he knew what he was doing. And so part of what that taught me is don't do that, Landon, right? Like, now, I have no problem uh, referring uh, clients to my professional network, uh, but I also understand now that's part of the value I provide, right? And so if you come to me as a client and you don't have a professional network, but you need one, I will help you build that professional, you know, as a professional team, sorry. If you don't have a professional team to execute your project and you need one, I will help you build that team. And I will, I will even help you manage that team. So we have clients we do this for on a regular basis. We help them find the geotechnical engineer. We help them understand the uh, geotechnical engineer's scope. We help them uh, understand what the geotechnical engineer needs to do their work. Same thing with the civil engineer and the archaeologist and the biologist and the arborist and the we do, we do that. That's part of what we do. We work with contractors and construction estimators to, to work up construction costs to, to see if a, a project's going to pencil. We are happy to provide all those services, but we ask that we get paid for it, right? And there's no shame in that, right? There's no shame in asking to be paid a fair amount, a reasonable amount for the value that your professional network brings to a project, right? And so... What are, what are some tips? If I had to offer other surveyors some tips, here's what I would tell you. If you want to avoid just giving away the value of your professional network, here's a couple simple things you can do. Number one, don't refer people, don't refer client, potential clients to people in your professional network until you're under contract, right? You, just, you have to tell them, if you would like my help building your project team and helping you answer these questions about who you need to get this work done, I'm happy to do that after I'm under contract for the survey work, or you can execute a separate contract with me to just do that project management work, right? Either or, either one works. Okay, so don't refer people, <laughs> don't refer potential clients to people in your professional network until they've got you under contract. And really you wanna know what, what kind of client, you wanna get a little taste for what kind of client they're gonna be to, before you send them to your friends, right? And second of all, if you're gonna help the client manage those contracts, you know, understand the scope of services, schedule the work, understand the deliverable that's provided. Get paid to do that, right? That's essentially what you're doing there is you're acting as an owner's rep. It's what I call an owner's rep, right? It's a project manager, it's an owner's rep. Um, and if you're if you're helping the client manage, find and manage and understand the work product of all those other consultants, you should get paid for that. A lot of times surveyors do that for free. They just give away that value. And that's not a good way to run a business, right? So there you go. You've got a professional network, even if you're grumpy. I know you do. You know some good people. And you can, you can bring that, the benefits of that professional network to your next real estate project. But don't give that value away. Make sure that the client pays a reasonable amount for it. And good clients will. They will do that.